the beautiful thing about drama training is there's a, um, a technique, qua drama, that we call it leaving the character behind. So whether you're removing the makeup, whether you're removing your wardrobe, you leave it at work. It's like you're taking off the, the, um, the, character. the, the character. You're leaving it the character. What color on Hi, my name is Pierre Locotelo. I play Wele Gasa on mm -hmm. The Brave Ones. Hi, my name is Tandura Horoche. I play Tandaza Gasa on The Brave Ones. Also, uh, anyway, I mean, you're a daughter of a pastor, and you know, I can only imagine how disciplined you were raised. Um, so, in the brave ones, you're a mother, and how much of your traits as a mother did you put into Tanel? Oh, wow, beautiful question. Thank you. Um, yes, I'm a pastor's daughter, uh, a proud one, and I think my mom had a lot of um, the traits that I used for, for Tandaza because she came across as very stern, strict, but absolutely loving. And because I think now that I'm a mother, I understand her better in terms of, oh, she was just that person who was strict and um, seemed to be overprotective. And because, you know, we were young, um, she was raising more boys than because I was the only girl and there was three boys that she had to raise. So I think besides just my dad being a pastor, but looking to my mother who had to bring up this brood of, of children, teenagers and going crazy with various um, experiences at the time. So I think I, I took a lot from my mom. Yeah, and fellow, I mean, yourself and Cindy were iconic actors, you know, sorry, no, Thank you. How are you both able to deliver this devoted aura on screen amongst the grief, um, you know, both of you, you know, uh, both of your characters and your experience? Look, man, um, I will say this. Um, when we started, maybe one episode or it was a cast, we were cast members. Mm -hmm. But as time goes on, we're starting to, to become a family. And now, on that family, you know, the family, um, when somebody's not there or somebody's um, having some difficulties in doing this, we are all there for one another. Mm -hmm. And also the, the directors will always, when they do scene protein, they will sit down with us and we, they talk and they will give us their vision and they will come with the vision and we say, no, don't do this, do this, do that. And you're starting to become the part of the production. So now whatever that the order that you saw, it was not just the order to to do acting. Mm. It was something that because as professionals, we need to do something that is authentic and believable. This is who we are. Yeah. So anyway, you know, did you at some point have to go for some sort of counseling after playing such an you know emotionally intense role? And what I liked about your role is that I mean, it, it wasn't even about like the tears that yeah. you could see that it's an emotion intense role. You could see it, you know, it, with, with your, with your your face and you know yeah. the, the, the I mean even the tone of your voice. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Can you tell us more about that? Thank you for saying that. Actually, I should have gone for counselling. <laughs> no, I didn't go for counselling. Um, the beautiful thing about drama training is there's a, um, a technique, what drama, that we call it leaving the character behind. So whether you're removing the makeup, whether you're removing your wardrobe, you leave it at work. It's like you're taking off the, the, um, the, character. the, the character. You're leaving it the character. So that act, and now in retrospect, it makes so much sense why our lectures were so, you know, pumping that into us. Never take makeup home. As nice as the makeup can be or um, the wardrobe home, it's not you, you are leaving. That act, that ritual has something to do by just you doing that, you are leaving it behind. Because otherwise, we'll all walk around as messed up people, right? Because you're carrying so much that you have not had time to have closure and leave it behind. So I just think, for me, just by taking off Tandaza's clothes and the shoes and everything, I left it there until the next morning and I have to wear it again and I step into her her thinking, her shoes and until I take it off again. So that was my, my process. 
friends. Yeah. Hello. In a Netflix production that you made in Vision, you dealt with um, societal issues like in the in the brave ones, you're dealing with another societal issue, which is expropriation. So, how well do you think that this theme was explored in the brave ones? See, um, what I love about the brave ones is that now we're talking about natural things now, mm. the natural things, um, the tree of life, which is where we now supposed to go back and ask ourselves who we are. Why about the trees, the, the flowers, and the soil? So all it's all about natural things, the side. And the, the, the supernatural thing is that we all have supernatural uh, abilities in ourselves, in each in and every one of us. So bringing out those things. And we remember that, that we grew up in the time where our grandmothers and fathers used to tell us stories. So now, when you come and you see this, and now you have to uh, narrate it, Mm. On, 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 on the big screen. Now, it becomes so easy to us because we lived that um, and we were longing for it uh, so that our children can start to imagine also. And it is good to imagine things and happening around you because now the more you imagine things, the, the more creative you become. Mm -hmm. So, um, I love the naturality of the brave ones. Yeah. And just last question for the both of um, you. know, in terms of African mythology, uh, there's a lot of misconceptions around the world about about that. So I just want to know from you guys. Um, you know, do you think misconceptions about African mythologies has had an impact in shaping um, humans' beliefs on like ancestors and spirits? I absolutely think so because there's a misconception about African mythology that it has everything to do with it's primitive, it's voodoo, it's dirty, it's behind, right? It's um, it's all for, um, but everything else in terms of the Eurocentric approach is it's it's enlightening. It's African methodology is very spiritual. It's very extremely progressive. Right, and I think I can only hope that that comes through once people have seen this. They go, Oh wow, so Africa has been um, about this way before you know time, whether in, through symbolism, which comes through a lot here, um, language, the respect, like Piola said, the respect to nature and our relationship as, as people that we've always had in, in terms of how we've related to the soil, the earth, the ground, the land and everything, that comes across very strongly. So I can only hope that afterwards people walk away, especially young ones will be like, oh wow, so there's nothing dirty and scary and primitive about about African methodology, but everything progressive and beautiful and um, enlightened about us. As a person, she's so telepathic. Whatever that she says, <laughs> the, all of that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I would say, I would say that yeah, she's she's quite right, mm. and um, uh, it it is okay to dream. Mm. It is okay to have powers, yeah. and it's not about just natural powers. Uh, we're talking about an individual that you grow up that powers. Mm -hmm. You have the power to lead people. You have the power to mm -hmm. ask questions. That kind of a thing. Your appearance, your presence says a lot that you have powers. So people have this misconception mm -hmm. of when we're talking about supernatural things, we have to talking about the voodoo's and mm -hmm. everything. No, we're talking about each and every child who has the supernatural powers to build mm -hmm. an airplane. Yeah. Anything we talk about, that's what you call supernatural things. And um, when it comes to that, we love to say to Netflix, uh, thank you, Netflix, for bringing out those stories.